Welcome to a course on sequence and series. In this lecture, we are going to talk something called monotonic sequences. Right? So, whenever we are talking about sequences, we will have to remember the definition of a sequence. That is, sequence is any mapping that is defined from the set of all natural numbers to any set. But, when we talk about monotonic sequences, we are restricting ourselves to the sequences that are defined on the set of real numbers with standard Euclidean metric. Right? Because we are going to make a comparison between the terms in the sequence to define the monotonicity. Okay. Monotonic sequences can be classified into two things that is monotonically increasing ones and monotonically decreasing ones. Okay. Here, along with the monotonically increasing and decreasing, that is also going to be split into two things that is monotonically increasing and monotonically strict increasing similarly monotonically decreasing and monotonically strict decreasing how are we going to do these things in a sequence we will take a general term after taking a general term we will see to the next term immediate next term of the particular tema and we are going to make the comparison suppose we are comparing Sn with Sn plus 1. Okay. Here we are taking Sn to be the given sequence. Right. After taking this, if it is going to be of this form, that is a general term. Okay. We have a next term. The next term is bigger than or equals to the previous term. This is true here. What we are talking is this is true for all n and d set of natural numbers. This is what we are going to talk about, right? If it is going to be this case, this is called monotonically increasing. If we relax this condition, that is, uh, we are looking for the strict less than case, that is monotonically strict increasing. Similarly, Sn bigger than or equals Sn plus 1 is monotonically decreasing and similarly, Sn bigger than S n plus 1 is monotonically strict decreasing, right? Whenever we are looking for, uh, whenever we are asked to check a particular sequence is monotonically increasing or decreasing, we have to make use of these definitions to check. This may be put in uh, another form that, uh, okay, this may also be written as Sn plus 1 minus Sn is bigger than or equal to 0. Right? From this, we get this. Okay. Similarly, this is Sn plus 1 minus Sn bigger than 0 and this is Sn plus 1 minus Sn is smaller than or equal to 0 and this is Sn plus 1 minus Sn is smaller than 0. Right? Now, if you define some constant sequence, okay, this is true for all n and n. Okay? We have a constant sequence. This is monotonically increasing or decreasing. Here, whatever Sn value is k, right? Yes, n plus 1 is also k. So, you may write Sn smaller than or equals Sn plus 1 as well as Sn bigger than or equals Sn plus 1. The equality is going to be true for all the values of n and hence the constant sequence comes under both the categories that is monotonically increasing and monotonically decreasing, right? Now, let me define uh, Sn is equal to 1 minus 1 upon n. Right? Let us see whether this is monotonically increasing or decreasing. Uh, for which let me consider Sn plus 1 which is 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1. What is Sn plus 1 minus Sn? Whatever may be the case, we have to calculate this thing and we will have to come to a conclusion that it is monotonically increasing or decreasing. This is going to be 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 upon n. So, when you do it, 1 1 gets cancelled. So, you have 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1 and this is 1 uh, n plus 1 up n plus 1 minus n upon n times of n plus 1 and finally, you are going to have n into n plus 1. In the denominator, in the numerator, you have 1. Okay. This is a positive quantity or negative quantity or non-negative or non-positive that we have to check. Okay. Here, n is any natural number. Which means your denominator part is always positive. Right? Okay. 
do we have any possible values of n for which this quantity becomes zero? We may say when n approaches infinity, this approaches zero, right? Here, you might have noticed I said n approaches infinity, not n attaining infinity, okay? Infinity can never be attained. We say n approaches infinity. So, the approaching is different from attaining, okay? When your n attains infinity, this quantity attains zero. Whereas, your n is approaching infinity only, and hence this approaches zero and this never zero, right? So, this quantity is always a positive quantity and what we have proved? We have proved S n plus 1 minus S n is positive and hence S n is monotonically increasing one, right? Suppose, uh, I take S n to be 1 plus 1 upon n, okay? What is my S n plus 1? This becomes like this, right? And what is going to happen here? These changes will happen and hence you will have n plus 1 minus n. So, it will be n minus of n plus 1. So, what are you going to have? Minus 1 upon n times of n plus 1 and your denominator is always positive and hence what are you going to get? This quantity is always smaller than 0. Hence, your Sn is monotonically decreasing. Right? If you want few more examples for monotonically increasing, you may uh, define the constant, sorry, identical mapping that turns to be a monotonically increasing one and Sn is equal to n square plus some constant k and the, these are few examples of monotonically increasing and similarly for monotonically decreasing, you may have Sn to be minus n, Sn to be minus n square plus k and these are some examples of monotonically decreasing sequence. Let us now see a theorem which is going to relate monotonically sequences with convergent sequences and when can we say a monotonically sequence converge or not. In this theorem, we are going to study when a monotonic sequence converges, right? Here, a monotonic sequence will be a convergent one if and only if it is bounded, right? Here, in the statement, you have to notice one thing very clearly, okay? The basic assumption that we take is Sn is monotonic. So, whether we assume and prove this one or assume this one and prove this one, Sn is being monotonic, right? So, only for monotonic sequences we are talking here. Uh, first, let me, uh, okay, what is given? Given Sn is monotonic, okay? They have not specified it is monotonically increasing or decreasing. It means it can be either monotonically increasing or decreasing. Okay. Initially, uh, let me take Sn as monotonically increasing one. Right. Let us prove the theorem for monotonically increasing sequence and then we will see what happens for monotonically decreasing case. Right. And uh, the first supposition that I am going to take is Sn is bounded. Okay. By assuming the boundedness of the sequence, we are trying to prove the convergence of the sequence. Okay. Whenever we take a sub, whenever we take a sequence is bounded, it means what? The range of the sequence is bounded. Right. Here, we have to identify some range of this sequence. That is, we are taking the range to be E. Okay, since the sequence is assumed to be bounded, this range is bounded. Okay, whenever you have a bounded set, you can always identify supremum and infimum of the bounded set. Right, here let me choose S to be the supremum of this set. Right, at the end of the theorem, I will tell you why we are choosing supremum instead of, why can't we choose infimum. Okay. Uh, I am choosing this to be my supremum. By the definition of a supremum, my Sn will be smaller than or equals S for all n in the set of natural numbers. Okay. Now I will have to do something with this. Uh, okay. For every positive quantity epsilon, there exists some 
capital N, which is a positive integer. Okay, such that what is going to happen? S minus epsilon is to be compared with S. In between that, we have some element S n. This I am saying. Okay, let me give you the construction of this idea. Whatever may be the value of epsilon, which is a positive quantity, I am subtracting that from S. Okay, and I have to compare this with S. I have reduced some quantity from S, therefore. It will be a lesser one. Okay, and I am saying there exists some stage n such that uh, s n is between these two values. Suppose that value does not exist. Okay, in between these two things, no such n exists such that this is happening. Which means what? In between it is not there. I mean, it cannot go beyond s because all the s n is smaller than or equal to s. So it will have to be. Like this, right? There is this sum n. This is what we are saying. We are not saying for all n. No n exists between these two means all the n has to lie after this. This tells you what your s minus epsilon is the supremum instead of s. This is the contradiction to the fact that s is the supremum of e. Hence, the existence is valid. This cannot be the case. Okay, this is some stage. Okay, some stage in the sequence. Now uh, we will see um, what. Now uh, let us try and combine all these things. Okay, for n bigger than or equals n, what is going to happen? Okay, n is a fixed stage. After that, we may take any value. Okay, we have to compare s n with s n. So this is some stage. We are taking some element after that stage. So this is going to be the case because of the monotonic increasing. Okay, this we have written from the definition of a monotonic increasing. Now we will have to combine these three things. Hence, what are we going to get? Have s minus epsilon is less than s n, which is less than or equals s n, which is less than or equals s. Okay, and this is true for n bigger than or equals n. This is not true for all the n. This is for this case only, right? And from this, I am going to leave off this part and leave off this part. I am just going to compare these two things. So this tells me s minus epsilon is less than s n. This can also be written as s minus s n less than epsilon. Taking absolute on both sides, what are we going to have? Absolute of s minus s n less than absolute of epsilon since this is a positive quantity this is also a positive quantity we can when we take absolute value the inequality is still there right and using the symmetry we may write sn minus s less than epsilon this is a positive quantity when we invert it it may be a negative quantity as well in order to have it as a positive quantity we are writing it way this way and what is sn here it is a monotonic sequence right Monotonic sequences are defined in the set of real numbers, and in the set of real numbers, the metric is a standard Euclidean metric. So, this proves what your S n converges to S, right? So, we have assumed S n is a monotonic increasing sequence with the basic assumption. We have taken S n as a bounded sequence, and finally, we proved it is convergent. Okay. Conversely, what is going to happen? Yes, sir. Uh, let us assume yes, sir. Is some convergent sequence, right? In the property of a convergent sequences, we have learned that all the convergent sequences are bounded sequences. Okay. Therefore, by property of convergent sequences, uh, yes, sir. Is bounded as well so this completes the proof when your sequence is monotonically increasing right now we'll have to see what is going to happen when the sequence is monotonically decreasing before that let me give you uh, what uh, here 
while saying this i have said why we have not chosen infimum right let me answer this and tell you what is going to happen when the ks is monotonically decreasing okay uh, monotonic increasing means s1 will have to be smaller than or equals s2 will have to be smaller than or equals s3 and it is going this way right and we have identified s to be the supremum of e so all these things will be like this right here can you identify what is the infimum of course it is going to be s1 all the entries in the sequence are smaller than or equals this s1 and hence this will serve as the infimum right if we choose infimum that is the first element of the sequence and hence it is difficult for us to talk about the convergence with the help of s1 to be uh, frank we cannot talk about the convergence with the help of s1 unless it is a constant sequence right similarly monotonic decreasing sequences are of the form s1 bigger than or equals s2 bigger than or equals s3 and it will go this way right here what is s1 s1 is the first element in the sequence that is for sure and means it is going to be the supremum and if you assume the boundedness of this sequence the supremum and the infimum has to exist for the range and hence we must have some infimum here right so when you assume your sequence is monotonic decreasing you have to choose infimum and you have to do all these things right and that tells you your monotonic decreasing sequences are also convergent whenever your sequence is bounded one right and here we have also done something um, what monotonic increasing sequence okay plus if it has the boundedness it converges to its supremum right monotonic decreasing sequence if it has boundedness it converges to its infimum when we have we don't have the boundedness what happens right monotonic increasing plus unbounded here from the definition of a monotonic increasing and decreasing itself what we have seen is that monotonic increasing sequences are generally bounded below sequences right so whenever we talk about the boundedness of a monotonic increasing sequence we always look for the upper bounds and its supremum right when we have unboundedness the supremum is going to be infinity when the limit is infinity we say it diverges to infinity right similarly monotonic decreasing sequences are bounded above sequences by the definition and hence if it is unbounded means it diverges to minus infinity so from this you may have noticed that monotonic sequences never oscillates right it is either converges to its supremum or infimum based on whether it is monotonically increasing or decreasing if if they are not bounded they diverge they never oscillate thank you for watching